lawnmower detective here. I just want to shoot this little video because um, I almost forgot. <laughs> I'm out here working on the shop in the shop, and I'm working on a customer's uh, zero turn, which I'll I'll spin you around and show you here in a second. But I literally almost forgot to record this. I came out here to record it, but I got busy. My mind went elsewhere, and uh, so anyway, here we go. So what you're seeing here is a Country Clipper SR350 and it came in here because the belt kept coming off and I have since found out that it was going under a bracket instead of over a bracket and causing the tension on the uh, PTO clutch which I'll show you it's in a minute I've already got it off so sorry you missed that but uh, anyway it's in here for a host of things full service on the engine oil change fuel filter valve adjustment air filter you know all that good stuff oil filter all that good stuff and uh, I've already greased everything and this is the condition of the blades that I, I took off there so I got to put a new set of blades on there um, but the belt obviously needs to be replaced. So don't pay attention to the squeaky chair. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, she's in desperate need of some TLC. Um, I got all those work fittings greased up already. And so I'm ahead of the game on that. Uh, let me pull you around here. So this is a Jazzy Pro 52 inch cut with a uh, Kawasaki F8601V 19 horsepower uh, so I'm gonna put new plugs in it I got to put new uh, valve cover gaskets on it they're gonna be ordered today so I'm gonna be ordering all the parts today I already had the Kawasaki oil in the oil filter so that's already done sorry you didn't get to see that but I will definitely show you I'll record everything when I go to put everything back together I had to take the uh, faceplate off of there. I guess I, I call it a faceplate, but that big metal plate right there, I had to take that sucker off of there just to get access to the uh, valve covers. So far, so good. It, it hasn't uh, presented any problems other than the PTO clutch was a little bit of a barrier to get off, but uh, it's been on there for quite some time. So the customer told me that every time he engaged the... Uh, the PTO sparks would fly out from underneath of the machine and uh, I'll show you why due to the fact that the belt was at the wrong angle so the belt was going like I said before under the bracket instead of over it it was already at a 30 degree angle so, so this here is shot this PTO clutch is shot you can see where it's supposed to be welded to these studs all the way around but it has just completely broke off so the sparks we were seeing were from the the pulley wasn't spinning but the clutch disc here was so these little tack welds here were grinding away at the pulley so so that's never going to work again so but anyway i'll get one on order from uh the supplier so we're good to go uh, but one interesting thing that I found, and uh, let me lay down here on the floor. I'm going to lay on the floor just for you all so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Bear with me. I don't lay on the floor very much. <laughs> so, <clears throat> up under here, the wire for the PTO clutch has to go through here in order to stay away from either side of the belt so you don't want that wire getting caught up in the belt so there's this crazy little bracket it's got two 11 millimeter bolts in it goes on like this and it's also the uh, torque stop for the PTO clutch itself so you have to put the wire through the hole and then put this on because that bracket the plug on the end of the wire does not go through that hole 
not a real smart thing to do but I guess if you're not really a hands-on engineer you'll do stuff like this so but anyway it was just a little bit of a pain in the butt but we'll I'll get it back on whenever it comes time to put it back on I always like to put bolts and stuff back where they go just so I don't kick them around on the floor or lose them anything like that so let me spin you back around so here I am laying on the floor <laughs> just for you so uh, I'll keep you up to date on this I'll come back from time to time while I'm putting this back together I got to get some parts ordered and uh, let me get up off the floor and uh, I'll show you the other one that came in today actually I'll give you a little bit of a tour of what's going on in the shop anyway so just bear with me and I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, so I managed to get my big behind off the floor. I know you didn't want to hear me do all that grunting and panting and all. <laughs> so anyway, what we got here is a Cub Cadet that came in last week. All of the fluid had drained out of the uh, transmission and obviously wasn't uh, pulling as, as good as, it, as the customer was used to. So... What I've got here is a Tough Torque K46DM is the model number. I'll explain this roll of wire here in a minute. But I went ahead and replaced the axle seals on both ends. You can see the bad ones back here. And also, in order to get the uh, filler plug out, you pretty much have to destroy it. So I got another one of those coming. So as of right now, this has been sitting here for... I'd say four days with new seals and it's full of fluid and we had no leaks anywhere but I won't know if I've got any serious leaks until I get the whole thing back together and get it back on the machine because the bushings here in the shaft feel like they're pretty good they got very little very little vertical movement so once I get the wheels back on and obviously get it back under the machine and get it under its own weight and uh, get it spinning just to make pressure. I won't know for sure if these uh, seals are going to hold under pressure. So, But they're brand new OEM seals. So, And I've got tough torque fluid coming. And that's what this is laying up here for because I just put that rag up there because, the like I said, you had to... I had to destroy that plug to get it out of there. That's that little magnet there. So that's basically just sitting there to keep critters and dust and dirt from getting in there. So the fluid that's in there now is a Castrol uh, GTX Magnatech uh, 5W30. That's just for testing purposes at this point. The uh, Tough Torque recommends a 5W50 and it's uh, the fluid that I've got coming is tough torque fluid, so uh, I know there's no warranty issues, but there's no sense not uh, putting the right fluid in here. A gallon or five quarts of that was like 50 bucks, so it's well worth waiting on it. So basically, that fluid is just in there to, to make sure it's not nothing's going to leak out at this point. So I got all these shafts cleaned up. You want to do that before you put your seals on. And I apologize for not recording that. I'm getting really bad about that, um, but I need to I need to change the way I do things. So anyway, let me uh, move you back. Let me spin you back around here slowly. So and this uh, this this is by far the highest dollar machine that's ever been in my shop. This is a uh, Ferris IS fifteen hundred Z. Uh, this is kind of top of the line. So, it's got a Kawasaki engine on it. I have not dug into any of the model numbers or specs or anything on it as of yet because it just came in about an hour ago. So, the problem it's having is that it runs, it, it starts well, it runs, but at the top end, it's kind of uh, missing a little bit. It, you, can hear, you can hear it cut out and it, it pops and cracks. It doesn't backfire, but there's just a little pop in there. So, I'm assuming 
that the carburetor needs to be cleaned. Um, it's kind of gunky down in here, and it looks like we got a little bit of an oil leak. So I'm going to have to diagnose this to uh, do some detective work and find out where that oil leak's coming from. But it could be right here on the valve cover gasket. There's some gunk on that side. And some gunk on that side. But how many of these things don't get gunky, you know what I mean? They're machines for crying out loud. But yeah, this is a nice one. It's a, a Ferris. If anybody has any information on these little suckers, let me know. If you guys know of any of the notorious stuff that they're famous for or any problems, you can let me know. I'd appreciate it. Just put some uh, information down there in the comments. I'd appreciate that. Uh, so that's what's going on around here, gang. Slowly but surely knocking these things out. And oh, I got a uh, my starter came in for uh, the big Yard Pro. This one, this is one of my machines. This is my workhorse machine. So she does all the grunt work around here, hauling trailers and tree limbs and big old pieces of wood and rocks and stuff like that. She's a good workhorse. This is the one that also goes on the uh, uh, the Franken trailer. This pulls the Franken trailer every year. It has that uh, Kohler Magnum opposed tw twin, 20 horsepower. That's a nice engine right there. I like it. So, anyway, that's what's going on around my shop these days, gang. Uh, got stuff everywhere. Bruce, I know you'd be upset, <laughs> but... Uh, sometimes in my shop it looks like something's exploded and uh, I have to call in the EOD and have them come in and wipe up the aftermath <laughs> so uh, so anyway with that being said if you guys need anything you know how to get a hold of me and give me a holler uh, I'll be checking in with you guys from time to time and I uh, hope to be doing the uh, uh, hang on a second let me flip you around so anyway, I hope to be doing the uh, 200 subscriber giveaway pretty soon. I'm getting close, uh, 178, 179 this morning, I believe. So um, I appreciate all of you. So you guys just hang in there, and we'll get there, and I'll get to the point where I'll be able to give some stuff away. So, But like I said before, if you guys need me for anything, you know where I'm at. So just give me a shout, shoot me an email. Uh, but most importantly, go over and... Check out Mick's channel. <laughs> you thought I was going to say it's donut time. Now go over and give give Mick a shout. Give everybody else a shout. You know, uh, DNR, give him a shout out. And go check out his channel. AJP, Scotty Daniel, uh, Dick Small Engine Repair, KB, uh, Rich over at Motors and Blowers Outdone. Psh, go uh, give them folks a, a shout out. And... Uh, like and subscribe on their channel ken small engine repair i know i'm going to be forgetting a lot of people and if i do i apologize but uh don't forget it's donut time and i'm dirty y'all believe that i actually do stuff look at this see that i actually get dirty can you believe that i'm out here working doing stuff like henry Henry Morosky is my, my hero. So, Henry, this is for you, buddy. It's donut time. This is Jungle Bob Repair from Birmingham, Alabama, and I just wanted to let everybody know it's donut time. <laughs>